The Crater Like Monster is a 1977 horror film from director William R. Stromberg. The movie opens near a mysterious island. They're trying to be ominous, but all I can think of is that they're using the Gilligan's Island font. This is starting to look like Twilight. Oh god, turn it off now! Over in a campground, Doc is doing what else? Smoking a pipe and reading about Scientology. A friend drives up with some amazing news. Doc! Doc, you won't believe what I just discovered! Hmm. Sit down. I can't. I have crippling hemorrhoids. Dan tells Doc he has to show him something. You're always bugging me at all hours of the night. <laughs> all hours of the night? What's it, like 5 p.m.? Oh, and a duck? You're just gonna leave both of these lit? They head over to an archaeological site. Oh, now it's night. They meet up with Susan and head into the mine. The walk through the cave is accompanied by 70s sitcom dream music. They tell Doc they've opened a new section of the mine and found some cave drawings. Ah, it shows the cavemen used Meteo to fight off Leviathan. With this discovery, the research team has proof that some dinosaurs survived in the Age of Man. I do believe that some of them are still here, and they're taking over our golf courses! Just then, a meteor crashes into the lake. Mustache Cop is on the case! One hell of a big ball of fire just hit somewhere in the vicinity of the lake. Goodness gracious! The crash causes the cave to collapse. The team manages to escape just in time. What are the odds of this happening right after they made archaeological history? The next day, Officer Steve heads to the local diner for lunch. Inside the diner, Arnie and Mitch are doing important things. Like staring at the waitress's butt. Look at that skullet. Steve arrives with the biggest thermos I've ever seen. How long does he need to stay up for? Days? He gets the waitress to give him a coffee refill of about five gallons. How ruined is his colon? Steve goes to talk to Doc. He tells him he's taken Dan and Susan out on his boat to find the meteor. I was over on the east rim of the lake. For a minute, I thought a 747 had crashed. <laughs> 747? More like a flaming tennis ball. Steve convinces Doc to come with them. Now the waitress is staring at their butts. Maybe it's just the local custom. Dan gets on the boat and whoa! Been hitting the old country buffet lately? The audience will not be seated during the incredible boat pulling out segment. Everyone looks concerned into the distance. Dan and Susan go underwater to search for the meteor. Meanwhile, Doc and Steve chat about last night. Does Doc just like the look of a pipe? I mean, he clearly isn't smoking it. They find the meteor, but it's too hot to bring to the surface. Wait, is that supposed to be the bottom of the lake or someone's fish tank? Nearby, a guy's out camping. Uh-oh, it's the deadly POV monster! The monster eats the guy. It's his fault for camping in the land of the lost. This fell's recording bird sounds when he hears a roar and sees... The Loch Ness Monster! Ah, beer and porn. Now this is the life. Steve then displays just how busy things have been at the office. He gets a call about the monster. One call today. That's a new record. Well, back to the ladies. The monster then decides to fill up on cows. He then hears from Farmer Ferguson telling him one of his bulls is missing. This fisherman is angry. Ugh, I hate everything. Stupid fish. Why am I doing this anyway? He rents a boat from Mitch and Arnie. The guy's out fishing when a mysterious fog moves in. The monster knocks him out of the boat and eats him. I was gonna go to town for dinner, but I think I'd rather have delivery. Wait, how is it day here and nighttime here? They find the boat they rented, but now it's filled with blood. How exactly? The guy was knocked out of the boat and eaten in the water. Are they even paying attention to their own movie? They bring Doc and Steve to the boat. They search the lake, but don't find the body. I don't think they looked for him that long. We'll keep looking. Sooner or later, he'll float up. Meanwhile, a couple are passing through Crater Lake on their way to Vegas. Arnie and Mitch are discussing the proper way to spell bait. I mean, look at that. Everybody knows bait spelled B-A-T-E. It's a hillbilly wiener joke. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tackle's missing a K. The couple take their car to a mechanic, but now it's going to take a couple hours to fix. Since there's no motel to stay at, they decide to go rent a boat. What? Mitch and Arnie talk about how excited they are to go to the local hoedown. And we're treated to several minutes of Arnie trying to start the motor. Since it won't start, they have to go back to shore. The couple sees them and rents the boat, which they immediately get to work. <coughs> Mitch and Arnie are arguing. Ugh, who decided on this shot? This movie isn't so much the Crater Lake Monster as it is the wacky misadventures of Mitch and Arnie. Steve thinks these fellows have a funny way of passing the time. 
While fighting, they find... The Psychic Severed Head! The couple are out on the lake. Look at all the stars. Are they on drugs? Shortly after that, the monster strikes. They get away and crash the boat on land, which somehow knocks the guy out. The guy wakes up after a while. Meanwhile, now that they're both awake, the monster finds them. Whatever will stop this monster? I know! Help us, Mr. Suki! I will care. The guy then sets the boat on fire. Okay? This works, for some reason, and scares off the monster. Well, maybe not scared. More like mildly annoyed. We step into low-budget Sam Elliott's apartment. He's driving to get what else? Liquor. I don't even drink and I want this booze t-shirt. The guy forgot his wallet, so he decides to rob the joint. The cashier pulls out a gun, so the guy shoots him. Wait! He's aiming his gun here, but shot him in the stomach? Doc's investigating the head. He tells Steve the scratch marks were teeth. I took a sample of fluid from one of the wounds. Uh, fluid. He asked Steve when the meteor came down. About six months ago. Six months? They did a pretty awful job of conveying that. I thought it was yesterday. Steve tells the locals to stay off the lake. Mitch and Arnie find the boat, and the couple? They didn't even try to go for help? They call the sheriff, who gets them to the hospital. The sheriff's mad at them for renting the boat, but he didn't notify people about the ban until after they rented the boat. Is this movie edited out of order? It's time for a look into Mitch and Arnie's life, complete with wacky music. <laughs> Steve stops at the diner, where the robber is. He takes off and Steve chases him. Seems kind of odd to have this random liquor store robbery subplot in the middle of a monster movie. The guy dumps the car off a cliff. He takes off and Steve chases him. He's at the lake and gets shot in the knee. Uh, I used to be an armed robber, until I took a bullet to the knee. Steve hides behind a tree and somehow the monster sneaks up, eats him, and he doesn't see or hear a thing. He calls Doc to tell him what happened. They really like using this establishing shot, don't they? It's like the third or fourth time. Steve goes out and, wait, I thought they said it was night. This is a less believable night than attack of the the eye creatures. He, of course, runs into the monster. He manages to get away and rushes to see Doc. He then tells him what he saw. It's like a huge alligator. No, it isn't. It doesn't look anything like an alligator. He takes him back to the scene of the crime. Boy, if only I could get a better look out here. It's so dark. I sure am glad I have my flashlight. I wouldn't be able to see anything. Steve goes to get his camera. Instead of the monster footprints, he takes pictures of kittens! They take the photos to Dan and Susan. Oh, now Steve is embellishing. First he said, You think you might have hit it? Doc, I was in such a hurry to get away, I can't be certain of that. And now he's saying, Anyway, I emptied my revolver into it. It just so happens Dan's been drawing pictures of the dinosaur. Susan then gives her theory. Down in the near freezing mud of the lake, there could have been a fertile egg. The meteorite crashed into the lake, warming the mud and water, creating a natural incubator. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You know the guy was a U.S. senator? <laughs> this guy was supposed to be a senator. They convinced Steve to let them capture the monster instead of kill it. The scary monster theme isn't exactly Jaws. <laughs> Steve gathers everyone for a town meeting. Or perhaps Overactors Anonymous. Trap it! You gonna let this thing set up housekeeping in the lake? I say kill it! That day, night, afternoon? The monster's heading into town. It goes after the mechanic. He then rushes to the diner to warn everyone. They go to see it, and it throws hay at them. Steve decides to be a hero and gets the plow. Arnie trips and gets eaten. Oh no, that's terrible. Not our beloved Arnie. Steve then very slowly drives the plow into the monster, which kills it. Arnie died how he lived. Stupidly. I think Mitch is depressed because this means he won't get a spin-off movie. All the sad music in the world isn't going to make me care about dead Arnie. The movie was filmed mostly around Huntington Lake and Palomar Mountain, California, on a budget of about $100,000. The movie suffered from all sorts of production issues. Apparently there was a huge problem with Crown International, who messed up just about everything. After filming started, they cut the budget and refused to pay for certain scenes. This created a lot of plot holes. Richard Cardalla, who played Steve, said, 
They turned it over to some hack to edit, which is why the movie was such a disjointed mess. He also said the production company did no post work, which is why the day for night shots are just day. The writer and director was also unhappy with the canned score, which they were forced to use. Critics blasted the film, and it was cited as one of the worst giant monster films of all time. Despite that, it went on to be very popular at drive-in theaters and eventually pulled in $3 million at the box office. Mark Siegel played Mitch. He quit acting in 1980 and moved into visual effects working for ILM. He's worked on everything from The Empire Strikes Back to Men in Black and recently Captain America the Winter Soldier. The movie was the fourth film to have stop-motion effects from David Allen. Allen later moved on to doing stop-motion animation for the puppets in the Puppet Master series, as well as other Full Moon films. He also worked on movies like The Stuff, Ghostbusters 2, and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. He was even nominated for an Oscar for Best Visual Effects in Young Sherlock Holmes. The monster in the Crater Lake Monster is definitely the best thing about it. Had the production company done the work they were supposed to do, it would have looked better. The monster still looked good, but with little post-work done, it looks pasted on in every environment. The Crater Lake Monster is not a good movie, but it's a fun movie to goof on. It's enjoyable in its own silly, broken way. So many scenes are supposed to be day for night, it's hilarious hearing the cast discussing it. Moonlight on a gorgeous lake. If the studio didn't screw them over, it most likely would have done better. The plot's fine, except for the oddball liquor store robbing subplot from out of nowhere. Oh, and Mitch and Arnie, well, eh. I don't think anyone would have missed them much. But then the movie would have been about a half hour long. If the whole story was there and they did the proper post work, it would have been remembered more favorably. Although there isn't much of anything they could have done to make the audience not hate Arnie.